Hello everyone and welcome to my Sprint 1.1 stand-up for uh, the class and I will be showing you what I've worked on. So um, this week I uh, have been focusing mostly on pre-production including uh, level designing uh, paper maps for the first two campaigns. Um, I'm going to be in charge of uh, handling the pre-production and uh, overall production of the first two campaigns until it is 100% complete. Um, I still need to get in touch with Katie because uh, I need to know if she's going to be doing the other two campaigns because she's the other level designer in the group as well. So. Um, if that's possible, that would definitely help out a lot, so I'll just have to communicate with her and make sure uh, she has that handled. So in Sprint 1.2, I can wrap up the pre-production process as soon as I can and then get into Unity, start greyboxing uh, the areas, and uh, really just going at it. And the way how I'm going to be doing it is I'm just going to be focusing on each level segment's completion first. I'm going to, I'm, so what I mean by that is I'm not going to grade blocks all of the areas, all of the stages at once. I'm going to make sure I have one level fully completed and then once that's completed go to the next level, gray box that, and just keep it rolling in that uniform. Um, so anyways, let's get to it. So I'm showing my folder here, Determined to Die, abbreviated as D2D. I have my paper maps. So the first two campaigns that I've made is Barn Hills and Swamp Heights. Um, Barn Hills is going to be more of a rural area for the survivors to roam around in, to, uh, it's going to be... Uh, very, a lot of hills, especially in the final boss fight. So there's going to be hills, there's going to be barns, there's going to be uh, shacks, there's even going to be a shantytown segment in the uh, campaign where players keep ha are constantly transitioning to um, the broken down uh, homes to the outer landscapes of the environment. So anyways, so as you can see here, I have segment one, segment two, segment three, segment four. Um, as far as I know, and I wanted to talk to this to Katie as well, but um, I believe it is best in the game's best interest to keep it at a maximum of four segments within the game. Uh, that way we're not over scoping and uh, the game is reasonably within scope and having an overall of four campaigns, but with um, 18 different segments in that case. So four segments for each campaign, and there's four campaigns, and that's 18 uh, segments total. So um, that still gives the player a lot of uh, value for the game. And there's going to be, ran I, in my paper maps, there's going to be random uh, spawn locations for the items. This includes health bar, I mean, uh, med kits, uh, you know, pickups like weapons and uh, uh, throwables and whatnot. So there's going to be a lot of really great um, replay value for the players because each time they play the game, it's going to be a different experience. They can play on the harder difficulties. So even though there are only four campaigns to start with, um, until you know maybe we uh, get everything finished and we want to add more campaigns, that's fine. But just for now, I think it's great that we're keeping it down to four campaigns with 18 segments. I think that alone is going to be a lot of work. Um, and we're not even talking about the programming and everything behind that as well. So. Um, we're just gradually feeling out the uh, overall um, pacing of the game, and we're going to modify our uh, scope as needed, but for now we're just going to keep it tight, 
and we're going to keep our original plan till it's completed and we'll see what amount of time we have. And we also do have to keep in mind that um, it is already June 14th. So um, it's, <laughs> I mean, we're starting Sprint 1.1 in the middle of the semester, almost, almost like uh, maybe one third or one fourth, whatever you call this. But um, yeah, so we definitely have limited time. So anyways, I'm going to be opening uh, Adobe Illustrator. Uh, I've made all of my paper maps in Adobe Illustrator because it's what I'm most comfortable using. And I feel like it's the most effective as well. <clears throat> so, um... Okay, so um, this is actually, uh, yeah, so, okay, right. So this is the first segment of uh, the Barn Hills uh, campaign. Uh, sorry for my uh, pause right there. I actually got confused. I thought this, so I actually did a lot of the segments uh, not in a row. So I did the third segment first the second segment uh, second, and uh, I believe I did the, the the boss segment third, and I did this one last, so I, that's why I was just confused for a second, so my apologies. Um, anyways, um, with this, there is, the players are going to be starting in a barn, in a shack, so they're gonna have to collect all their collectibles and collect everything they need. Both, uh, before they can go out and kill some zombies. So since this is technically, I wanted Barn Hills to be like the very first campaign a player touch touches. Of course, all of the campaigns will already be unlocked. Um, it will all be available to the uh, gamer themselves. So um, it doesn't really matter which one they choose, but I do want this to be primarily the first campaign because it's relatively simple and when I say simple I mean you know there's not any like cra super crazy puzzles or there's nothing like too wild where you know the player feels like they're being too challenged so it's a really nice uh, beginner uh, level I feel like and right here we have a lot of options for the player to go the player can go around this way, this way, and this way. Keep in mind that these rest in peace signs are actually zombie spawn locations. I just added kind of like a like a, a cemetery stone to resemble the zombie spawn locations. So the bigger, and you notice that they're different sizes. Basically, the bigger sizes is the higher amount, the higher amount of the zombies spawning in that location, and the smaller ones are the smaller amount of zombies spawning in that location and I want it so I, I still have to talk to the programmers about this to see if they can do it but preferably I would like zombies to only spawn where the players are close because obviously for optimization purposes and whatnot it's not going to make sense if a pl if all the players are right here or say a player is right here and right here and you know zombies start spawning up here and only up here so we want to make sure that the zombies are spawning near the player that they are quickly spawning so that they can you know start hoarding the area they can start clogging up the spaces where it can be difficult for the player to like get through the spaces where they need to get through and uh so forth anyways um these uh i'm actually gonna go right here so this is just going to be a garden slash vineyard vineyard for the players and they cannot uh touch uh, they cannot touch this um, area. It's only exclusive to the zombies, but they can climb over the fence, the zombie-wise, and attack the players that way. So um, this is a really great opportunity for zombies to start spawning, and they'll even start spawning, uh, like, over here, like, zombies should be flooded throughout this area, even before players actually get out here. So... Um, that's another thing about staying in the safe room. You want to pack up, well, you should pack up as soon as possible because each t second you're staying in the safe room, it's only giving the chance for zombies to spawn more, higher in quantity, and uh, 
to be faster as well. So um, it's really up to players to make sure that they get out of there in a timely fashion manner. And uh, they really get out there to kick some zombie butt. Um, these per, uh, pink circles, that's the uh, item locations. That's the spawning locations. And with this, I totally want it to be randomized as well so that it can be a med kit, it can be ammo, it can be uh, a weapon, it really can be any collectible or consumable. So that's why I didn't add any like gun icons or med kit icons because that's essentially what these pink uh, icons are going to be. They're going to be randomized, so there's no way of telling if it's going to be a med kit or, uh, you know an assault rifle or whatever. Um, so as we go right here, also you'll notice this. This is a one-way uh, exit only uh, door. So players can go out this way, but they can't go in. So there's just going to be a hill or something where the player can fall down, but they can't get back up. And these circles right here, these are the actual hills. These are where the terrain is going to start and end. And basically the middle is going to be like the highest. Um, I'm going to be playing around with the terrain tools in Unity since we are using Unity. But um, uh, I, there's going to be a lot of parts in this map where it's going to be very hilly. So um, this is going to be uh, an advantage and disadvantage to the player as well. Because it's going to take them a lot more time to climb the mountain of course. So um, players really need to make sure that... Players need to be basically be super smart on when to split up for time's sake and when to stick together for survival stakes because um, obviously there's a spawner here and since it's going to take a player to take a, quite a long time to get up the mountain, there's already going to be a handful of zombies here. So, um, you know, if that player is low on ammo or the zombies are already enraged, especially if they're playing on a higher difficulty, then they're really, they really need to make sure that they're being strategic on how uh, they're going to attack the zombies, whether if it's by themselves, it's with their teams, or uh, whatnot. Because the worst case scenario, a player gets incapacitated in this area, and all of their uh, buddies are over here and over here on the mountains and whatnot, and it's going to take them a long time to defeat the hordes and to get to them on time, especially with... The zombies that have already defeated the player like uh, surrounding the player themselves so um that gives zombies a perfect opportunity to really creep up on the players and even though it is just ai um with the sort of ai director we're going with where uh there's going to be zombies spawning a uh, strategic in a strategic manner um, zombies, even the AI, can really uh, get players to their disadvantage, but it's also a bad idea for players to be grouped up all the time because then, of course, there's the timer. And, um, you know, if all the players are together, then that means they're uh, not going around looking for resources, they're not destroying as many zombies as they need to because they're all in the same area. Um, they can really actually end up wasting more time if they're all together. So that's the beauty of this game, and that's what I really, really spent a lot of time on my paper mapping. I, I've really tried a, a long time, uh, a lot of time to be very strategic in my level of designing, so that um, you know it's not too easy for the players and it's not too hard. But basically, it is going to provide a challenge no matter what difficulty you are on. And even if you are on the most basic difficulties, it's going to teach you a lot. Not only the map design itself, but also how to play the game and get better at it as well. Um, and obviously, these slit lines are doorways. They can be doorways or just uh, you know entry points, but basically... That's where they can go into, and you'll notice the village uh, shacks right here. Players can go inside of it. Um, they can go inside of it, loot it, and get everything they need to, even destroy some zombies in there if uh, they find any. Um, and once, obviously, as we see right here, so for each segment, a player is going to have different goals in order to 
um, unlock the safe room. And as you notice, there's a crease right here that is kind of like a gray, gluish color. Um, and that means it's a locked door. It can be opened, but it just has to be unlocked by, of course, completing the challenge. Uh, natively, all safe rooms are going to be locked from the get-go, so it doesn't really matter that I have these. I just wanted to point that out, that safe rooms will be locked from the start. Um, as soon as all the players complete the goal as a team, uh, then the safe room will unlock, um, and they can progress through the campaign. And um, as we can see, the goal of this uh, particular segment is uh, the players have to clear a certain number of zombies on the map. And the reason why I say a certain number of zombies on the map, I'm not giving a fixed number because, of course, there's going to be different difficulties for the players to play on. So, And it's also going to depend on... Uh, on how many uh, players are playing, because obviously, if there's going to be more players, um, you know they have the advantage to kill more zombies. So, um, basically, the number of zombies is going to be based on the difficulty the players are playing on and how many uh, teammates that player has. Um, that's also going to be on the time mechanic as well. Whereas, you know, if there's more players, there's going to be just a teeny bit more time versus to just one player. I mean, all of this can be done in single player, but there's going to be more time given to the player if uh, it's only single player. Because, of course, one player could not finish the entire segment by themselves with the normal amount of time they would have with uh, having more teammates. So it's all, it's all about balance. And it's uh, definitely that balance I'm trying to compose in my level designing. So that's it for the segment one. We're going to jump to segment two. So segment two is more of a... Uh, it's more forwards rather than uh, in all directions. But as we zoom in right here... The player starts right here, they exit the barn that they just ent that entered in the previous segment, and then this is meant to give players a split direction, so players can either go through this way or through this way, and this is meant to really challenge the players in really making that first decision if they want to split up and find more resources and, you know, be a bit more riskier that way, or if they would rather just all bundle together and go this way, or, um, you know, three players go this way and you have one teammate go that way because those three team members are using a microphone and that other teammate isn't. Who knows, right? Every experience that the player plays the game in the segments are going to be entirely different. Um, so this area is the consists of the shanty villages, the broken slash abandoned villages, the player can go to. So um, I should actually add a different color around here so we can understand what is the inside and what is the outside. But from since I'm just doing this for myself, I'm just going to tell you what is the inside and outside. Uh, all of this is going to be the uh, outside area and it's it's just going to be breaking up actually so um you know um the I, i'm sorry so these are actually the inside areas and this breaks up to the outside area um the roofing is just going to end a little bit right here to so the player can get back outside and pursue the next uh part in the segment but um anyways they're gonna be they can go like inside a few zombies get the treasures or the uh, items that will provide useful to them you know go back out and face more zombies and uh, potentially get here perhaps a little bit faster or they can go over here get that extra treasure might get hurt by a zombie but will still uh, progress anyways so um, if they don't go through that path they'll also go through here these are also rooms right here um, the shanty towns, and basically this has less treasure uh, and items to pick up, obviously. So this is definitely going to be the more item-rich path, but um, 
this is still an alternative for the player to go through as well. Um, I might add some few modifications to add more zombie spawns, but of course it's all about playtesting. We're going to playtest and see if we need to make any changes from there. <clears throat> and uh, from here, as you can see, um, we're getting to two different areas, um, all in the same segment, of course, but of the campaign, but two different areas to even test the players' uh, strategy more so, you know, to split up or to stay together. Um, one player could go into the swamp area and uh, could get uh, some treasures as well as these blue so you'll notice these blue uh icons the circles and uh they will have a number on it and for this instance this one is a one um that means that these are all uh puzzle locations because in this segment we actually have our goal um our goal for the segment is that this is a puzzle-based uh, segment, so the players must find all four pieces of the puzzle and place them in order for the gate to open, uh, leading the players to the safe room. So um, I I'm jumping a little bit ahead right here, but this is basically where players will go to place their puzzles. And as I was mentioning before, um, one means puzzle one, or puzzle piece one. So puzzle piece one can spawn on any of these blue dots. And now it's only one puzzle piece. So that means it's going to spawn anywhere in these, this provided, uh, these provided locations. So it could end up spawning over here, could spend, sp uh, end up spawning over here. Um, this is going to challenge the players each time they open a game because, you know, the puzzles will be appearing in different places every single time. So um, that's really going to challenge the players to, uh, you know, act as if it's a new experience each time. <clears throat> um, so uh, the players will go through here. If they end up going this path, they'll go here. They'll end up going here as well. They can split over here. And uh, as you can see, these are puzzle, the puzzle number four pieces. So puzzle uh, number four, the fourth puzzle piece can spawn in any of these locations. It's, it will spawn in a shack, but it will spawn in different places of the different shacks. So that's going to even give the players more of a challenge as well. Um, we also have the third puzzle piece as well. It's going to be amongst this area. Um, and I, I think you get the point for the different puzzle pieces and the select locations. So um, that's basically it. Um, it's basically just a lot of navigation. There's gonna, it's kind of like a maze this segment because it's really supposed to challenge the players and tax them of their time so that they're really starting to feel the burn of things and finding the puzzles as quick as they can while dodging zombies to conserve ammo as well as finding ammo to kill the zombies so um yeah guys this is the uh segment and it's going to be very challenging uh, i did that horse laugh because it's uh going to be challenging for the players and i can only imagine the fun they're going to have each time they open this level um to have a different experience each time. So that's why I really put a lot of effort into uh, understanding and figuring out where each puzzle uh, chance location should appear and be placed in. All right, so we're going to go to uh, section three of Barn Hills. And basically with section three, uh, this uh, the goal of this segment is that the players have to actually um, clear all zombies within this location in order to uh, unlock the door to this shack over here and then once they uh, once they do that then um, they're going to find a key within the shack um, in order to uh, unlock the safe house because this safe house will actually require a physical key 
And once any player picks that up, any player can go into the safe house. And uh, I'm sorry, uh, the player having the key has to go in the safe house to use it. So this means if a player dies while they're holding the key, um, the key will just be right where they died and another player will have to go and pick it up. So um, right here, we're going to see a lot of cottages, uh, small barns. We're going to see a lot of picketed fences to keep players in, you know, more of a uh, rural suburban-ish area to the Barton Hills um, because we're seeing the picket fences and whatnot. We actually have like a little cemetery right here where zombies will just be spawning. Um, and they'll be going all over the place over here. And this was actually the first uh, paper map that I did. So I still have to go around placing the uh, little uh, rip uh, gravestone uh, zombie spawners. But once I do that, it should be good. And I'm going to add the events as well. So um, right here, players will go through the main trail. They can go in the cottages slash small barns to uh, pick up collectibles, weapons, you name it. There's just going to be this wooden gate with a door that they can go through. Um, there's going to be some trees right here. This is going to be a pretty grassy area. So this gives players a lot of room to maneuver um, and a lot of space as well. Um, I'm, I might actually add it so that this big area is going to be like a cornfield so that players can't actually, uh, it's going to challenge the player's vision and getting them to where they need to be. So that's the only design decision I might change to this. Um, and then we have the wooden gate with the door, but as I said before, the players must destroy all the zombies in this area in order to unlock the door. And then once they unlock the door, they'll go into the shack, grab the key, and then notice once they grab the key, a rush event will uh, occur because technically this is the uh, um, last level uh, for the player to accomplish before they reach the boss segment. So there's going to be, there's usually going to be a rush event on the third segment to really challenge the players to move as quick as they can. And the zombie uh, occupancy is going to be very high. So um, this gives, you know, zombies to be a chance to be enraged quicker, which gives them to actually sprint towards the player and um, to uh, basically ru rush the players as fast as they can. So players really have to be on their toes as soon as they grab the key so that they can make it to the safe house just in time. And I added, uh, and basically this is a gate where the key is going to be unlocked, and then the players can split up if they are feeling risky and they want to grab those uh, collectibles before the boss fight. Um, notice that the collectibles are scarce because we are appearing in the boss fight next, so we really want to challenge the players to really go after those, uh, those, uh, pickups. And of course, doing that will, uh, split the players off unless they have the decent amount of time for, you know, for them to be grouped up, go here, go here, go here, and then there, versus that person goes there, that person goes there, that person goes there meet up at the safe room, get in there, boss, uh, transition to the boss fight starts. <clears throat> so that's the third segment. Um, I'm going to be going to the fourth and final segment of Barn Hills in which this is the boss segment actually. So this is the boss segment here. I've added it more to be of a circular uh, ca uh, canvas, I want to say, so that uh, so the boss has a lot of range to, uh, you know, maneuver in, and they can do a lot of range attacks while give, still giving players to dodge those ranged attacks by uh, going in the hills, hiding behind trees. Um, this is going to be like a little stepping stone right here, like a little plaza area, so players can like hide behind the pillars, you know, it, the players are going to have a lot of room to 
protect themselves in. And as you can see, there are more collectibles because the players are just going to be unleashing the bullets and their items they've used into the boss. So um, it's going to be using a lot of resources from the player, so we have to give them as much uh, resources as they need. <clears throat> and this is just a reminder that not all um, collectibles will uh, be like present, right? It, it's still, like I said before, all of them are going to be randomized. Even in the other segments, they're going to be randomized at different times. And items can even disappear if players are too, taking too much of a long time to reach them, so that this gives uh, other locations a chance for uh, them to be active and new items to spawn up. So um, the boss can spawn anywhere, really. They can spawn in the barn, they can spawn in the center, um, anywhere. So um, players will definitely be keeping a lookout and, you know, decide if they want to take shelter in the barns, remind you that the boss can totally destroy the doors, destroying that defense. But um, the players can still try to hide if they need to, if they're running out of health and they need to hit patch up for a quick second while another teammate distracts the boss and you name it, right? There's so many different uh, opportunities that the level design really gives to the player to enhance their experience as much as it can. Um, with that case, um, that uh, once they defeat the boss, as you can see, there is no end area once they defeat the boss uh they win the campaign um they win the campaign and of course the rankings will show and how the, well the players have done and it gives the chance for a player the players to vote on a new map uh, i mean a new campaign so it keeps the players still in the game and they can change the difficulties maybe they want to play the same campaign with a higher difficulty um, you know, so it really, uh, there's a lot of replay value and that's how we're doing it in just four campaigns and 18 segments. So that's it with Barn Hills. That's the entire campaign for Barn Hills and all of the strategies and design decisions discussed within Barn Hills. I will now be going into the, uh, t technically two, um, finished, uh, paper maps for uh, Swamp Heights. I won't be showing, well, I will sh still show the uh, third segment, but it isn't 100% finished. So just keep that in mind, but I will be showing you the first segment, which is finished. So right here, um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about this uh, campaign. It's going to be very swampy, as you can tell from the name. And there's going to be a lot of water-based uh, areas. So within water, this is going to s uh, slow down the player um, the same way as the hills did in Barn Hills. So um, this is obviously going to take time from the player and really make sure the player is using the boards, as you can see here, uh, effectively and as much as they can. However, this may not always be the case because there can be zombies in the water that they need to destroy or collectibles in the water and you name it. So um, the goal of the segment is to wipe out all the zombies in the area and the zombies that spawn. So this will be the same thing as uh, killing all the certain amount of zombies, right? So um, basically the three different goals in the segments are rather... Uh, killing out the certain amount of zombies, um, getting a key to unlock the safe room, or doing uh, gathering puzzle pieces for the player and, of course, the boss fight. So those are the four different uh, types of goals for each segment to have. Um, it doesn't really have to go in any order as long as the boss fight is last because, of course, the boss fight has to be last in order for the player to truly finish the campaign. <clears throat> so uh, the players will start here amongst the boardwalk. This is just a short little boardwalk right here. This is going to be a darker swamp environment. So players really have to watch where they're stepping and making sure that they're staying on the boards so that 
they uh, can really save a lot of time rather than traver traversing through the water. Um, there's even going to be a base area uh, where there's no liquids and the zombies can spawn on land and in the water. So um, this gives a lot of opportunities for the zombie AI as well, which provides a huge challenge for the players. So um, right here we see a lot of different branchings where players can go. They can go this way, can, they can go that way. It can go this way, and basically this is ba basically a deeper part of the, the water. It doesn't slow down the player's speed. They still walk the same speed as they are in normal water. It's just a little bit higher so that um, players really have to focus on headshots for zombies because, of course, they can't see the zombie's body, so they have to really get those headshots in to... Um, kill the zombies in this particular area um and this of course makes it harder to see where the players uh are going and how much to determine how much room they have because essentially you know if they crouch they're going to be underwater um so it's going to be pretty deep um and then of course say a player doesn't go this way they go this way and these are little stairs right here for the players to go into the swamp area Go into the enterable house, get uh, kill the zombies in there, get the uh, you know the special items, you name it, and the players can go back up here. They can maneuver along these lines, these boardwalks uh, amongst here, and uh, this gives a lot of opportunities for. So even if the player say gets pushed off by a zombie, they can still you know get on this land, you know jump off the land, get onto here. Uh, there's a lot of uh, special maneuver tactics for the players. So that's why I kind of added this island in here so that in case a zombie gets, uh, I mean, a player gets pushed off, they have that uh, small advantage to them. Um, so yeah, basically once they defeat all the zombies that are required, the safe room will unlock and they can go in and finish. And that is segment one of Swamp Heights. We are now going to look at the second segment. And with the second segment we have here, we have uh, um, a lot of different branches. Again, it also it looks like a maze as well because as we can see here, the segment goal is finding all the puzzle pieces. So um, you'll see these symbols again to tell the player or tell the programmers where uh, the chances are for the uh, puzzle pieces to spawn the options of course so <clears throat> basically uh players can uh get isolated actually quite quickly throughout here because as you notice there's a lot of different ways players can go and i did this on purpose so that uh players can um you know have more of a higher chance of splitting up which is more recommended so that they can start looking in all of the spots because you never know if you're going to find puzzle one and puzzle two straight away, but then with puzzle three, it's taking you almost, you know, six minutes, seven minutes of the entire time you have as a team to find it. And uh, that can provide an immense challenge, right? So um, that's uh, very important. And I actually just thought about this now, but a design decision that I might apply to these um, uh, markers just in general, I might just have it so that there are actually no, uh, no numbers and pu any puzzles can spawn anywhere. So puzzle one can uh, spawn over here and vice versa. It's more of a free for all. I think that would provide even more of a challenge to the players. So uh, that might, we also might take advantage of that. That also could be an option for uh, players to, like, once they reach the higher difficulties, if they choose to do that, it can be more uh, sporadic, but for the lower difficulties, it can still maintain uh, this format. Um, th that, of course, is still a design decision, and we need playtesters to figure that out, along with, I need to discuss that with Katie and the other designers of the team to make sure that we are uh if that's a good and effective decision to make 
So that is segment two, everyone. Um, we're going. I'm going to show you a little bit of segment three. Um, I, as you can see, it's not finished. Um, I'm not. I wasn't really impressed with uh, segment three. It's actually. I was doing this at like 10:30. My brain is actually pretty cooked. So um, I might actually end up scrapping this and redoing it. Although I did like um, the route I was going with this. I want this to be more of a residential area to the Swamp Heights. So this will be a lot more uh, spots where play, uh, interiors where players can go in. And of course uh, a lot more swamp air, uh, water areas for the player to traverse in. Um, and yeah. Uh, that's all I have for this Sprint 1.1. I feel like I did an immense amount of work because although it is uh, 1, 2, 3, you know, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 paper maps, it's, I've spent a, a great deal amount of time on this in order to ensure uh, everything is balanced and everything suits the game's mechanics along with uh, how the game's going to be operated. Uh, the opportunities that the players are going to have in the maps, and uh, you know the diversity of the spawn locations, and making sure that uh, the zombies are spread out so that the zombies are appearing in all areas of the map. So I will just be needing to finish uh, section three, and um, once I finish that, I will just be needing to do the boss segment, which is segment four of Swamp Heights. And then my pre-production of the first two campaigns will be finished. I will be then going into Unity, as I said before, gray boxing and making sure that um, uh, the campaigns are accurate and well ready to go. Um, if I get done with the first gray boxing a bit earlier in the next sprint, then I might just start. Uh, along with the other production, I will probably, uh, you know, I will definitely be creating an asset list to give to the artists so that they can model out the assets that is needed for this game. So um, we have everything planned uh, quite accordingly well. We have been using Jira, uh, Jira software in order to keep track of everything, update everyone and using Discord as well. The only thing that I think is blocking my uh, me is my time. Um, I've definitely have been working non-stop through all of my classes. Um, not really having a lot of time for my free time because my free time is consisting of uh, work in some shape, form, or another uh, work. But I am happy that this is week six we are approaching, so... Um, I believe we can get everything done within the time given to us, even though the work cycle is a bit shortened. I feel like we can get this game done, um, and I think we can get it too close as we can to having it be a valid prototype. Um, let's see, were there any other questions I might have missed? For the stand-up, let's see, what did I work on last? I just told you all of that. What I, what I work on next, just told you. What is standing in my way, just told you. And yeah, as I said, the team is doing good. Um, I feel like uh, we're being very uh, communicative through you know, each other as team members. Um, there is, uh, you know, um, sometimes where, you know, a person may be available, um, that is trying to receive communication from another person that isn't available at that time, but I believe we are doing our best as a team with many classes and, uh, most of us on this team are in our, uh, final semester or nearing our final semester. So, um, that definitely... Make, we have a lot of work to do, essentially, is what I'm trying to say. So that's it for the stand-up. Thank you for listening to this very, 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 very long stand-up. I just wanted to make sure that my design ideas are expressed out so that my work hours 
basically will explain themselves. Um, the reason for my work hours, because obviously I spent seven hours today making sure that um, the design of the uh, maps are as good as I can get them. So yeah, that is it. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for listening. All right, bye.